I typically forget to announce that there's a second collection, and there is today. It's for the uh, retired uh, parish priests of the archdiocese. But let me take this opportunity to say that the pastor of my home parish in New Hampshire, Father Dan, he stayed pastor of the parish until he died at the age of 91. And I want to at least match his record. So I'm not interested in retiring, but some guys apparently have to. I don't know why, some get sick. Anyways, I'm not. Okay, I'm reading this book. Well, I was reading it. Uh, what really happens after we die? There will be hugs in heaven. Well, this author seems to think he knows a lot about the afterlife, and uh, I'm not the least bit inclined to do much uh, imagining of what that would be like. My, my uh, approach comes from the first letter of John, the third chapter. Behold, we are God's children now, what we shall be has not yet been revealed. A healthy kind of agnosticism. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In other words, the vision of God is a transforming vision. So, there's always kind of interest in afterlife and what it's going to be like. And in today's gospel, that subject is raised by the Sadducees, one of the political parties in ancient Israel, who do not believe in the resurrection, do not believe in an afterlife, accepted only the first five books of the, the, the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. They set no store whatsoever on the prophets, not even Isaiah or Jeremiah, they disregarded the Psalms. They were not expecting a Messiah. So when they come up to Jesus with this question, they're not really asking to have an answer. They are trying to reduce him to ridicule. And so they come up with this nutty story about one woman marrying seven men. No doubt she died. She must have been exhausted. Anyways. They present this question to Jesus, and Jesus doesn't get upset. He knows that they're ridiculing him. They're kind of messing with him. So he goes to the scriptures that they accept, which is uh, the book of Exodus, and that's where God says, I am the God of your father, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Jesus says, he's not the God of corpses, he's the God of the living. They are still living in the sight of God, in the heart of God, because love doesn't end. God loves us, he's, he's precious in our sight, and so that love doesn't end. And we know that ourselves. My father died when I was a teenager, I still pray for him. I love the man, I will always love him. And it's true in your own family, you lose people, you don't stop loving them. God loves us in life, that does not stop. One of my favorite scriptures is from Romans, the fifth chapter, the fifth verse. The love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So, as I've often said, keep repeating myself, in a quiet moment, you realize something that's kind of extraordinary about yourself. Despite your faults, despite your failings, despite mistakes you've made, in your soul you love God. You know that about yourself. And that's what St. Paul is talking about. He's not talking about something in heaven. He's talking about your life now, what you learn about yourself, that you love God. And that love continues, just like our love continues even when we lose people. So, the afterlife 
it's very hard to imagine, but it is the clear promise of Jesus's resurrection. Now, how do we think of the afterlife? I'll give you the benefit of some of my thoughts. In our lives now, we can experience continuity with radical transformation. So, an egg doesn't look anything like an eagle. A butterfly doesn't look anything like a caterpillar. An acorn doesn't look anything like a giant oak. A small brown bulb doesn't look anything like the beautiful daffodil. So what we see is radical transformation with real continuity. And that's what I believe about eternal life. Do we know what we're going to look like? No, we don't. Is it worth speculating? Why? We only know that we will be with God and we will be like him. And that's something important for us to know. Now, there's a beautiful psalm passage. But we need to realize that the idea of an afterlife emerged kind of late in Israel, 200 years before the birth of Christ. Before then, there were just only the barest hints. The Sadducees thought that if we live good, God rewards us in this life. You might read the book of Job in that light, where Job loses everything, but it's all restored to him. In this life, well, 200 years before the birth of Christ, the Syrian empire under Epiphanes was forcing people out of their own religions into Greek religion. And the Jews would not go along because they knew they were precious in God's sight. They were the covenanted people. They weren't going to give up their faith. And so that's why you have this tremendous reading from the book of Maccabees, where all of these young men bravely gave up their faith because they believed in the resurrection. They were not going to be assimilated. They were not going to leave their faith. That's 200 years before the birth of Christ, this firm belief in the resurrection. Otherwise, we are reliant upon uh, hints. For example, I'll close with this a beautiful kind of testament of love and trust, which we find in the 16th chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. 10th verse. You will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor let your devout one see the pit. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Beautiful. You have an eternal destiny. Do you know what it's gonna be like? No. My personal motto is live the mystery. Live God's unfolding love for you. And in eternity, you're going to be beautifully surprised at what you have become. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen.